Hi there, and welcome to this webinar on design of experiments and on the Taguchi loss function. <coughs> so uh, let's start with the design of experiments. What is an experiment and what is the design of experiments? So basically, design of experiments is a methodology that allows us to apply statistics in a systematic way um, to perform experimentation in a structured manner. Um, it allows experimenters to develop a, a mathematical model that will enable them to then predict how various input variables will interact and what output variables or responses they may create uh, in a system or a process. It's widely used for a, a range of different purposes and uh, you will find design of experiments in pretty much all fields of engineering and of science. So generally, when we're using a design of experiments or a DOE, we can learn significantly more about the process we're investigating. Um, we can also screen important variables, build obviously the mathematical model, which I mentioned, um, and that allows us to obtain uh, equations uh, to predict outcomes um, and then optimize the response. So it allows us to model and to develop a forecasts of how things will run, um, and obviously learning significantly more about processes and systems as we do these. It is a problem-solving tool. Um, if we think about it, if you have a serious problem, a complex problem, then we need good, uh, appropriately uh, structured problem-solving tools. And in this case, if we get highly complex problems, such as color being too saturated, which can have multiple variables uh, inputting it, orders not being delivered on time, or even uh, banding on pictures and, um, and scans, all of these types of issues can have complex causes, multiple factors um, contributing to those issues. So it's important to have a methodology to be able to look at these different aspects and try and understand the, the, the problem or the situation in all of its complexity. So essentially, it helps us to uh, to answer key questions. You know, we've got a media jam, the printer stuck. Uh, is it because of the spring tension, the exit angle, the lubricant? Lots of different factors. So we're trying to figure out which factors have the strongest effects, not just which factors influence it. Um, also, is there any interaction going on between the factors? Are they all acting completely independently? Or when some of them act together, do we see a different response? Um, also, it helps us to figure out ultimately which factors we want to, uh, which factors we want to adjust and to what settings in order to get the, the best performance results from that process or system that we're talking about. So um, what is an experiment? Um, it's a test or a series of tests where we deliberately make changes um, to the input factors. So the things that are inputting into the process, we vary them um, into the system. And obviously the purpose of that is to see what the outcomes are going to be like. So what responses do we see in the, the outputs of that process or system? So essentially we, we, we adapt or modify the inputs to see what happens to the outputs. Um, for example, if we have a complex environment where we maybe have five different factors that are influencing the process and we're looking to manage two key responses coming out of that, we might want to know what the effect um, on the response is from each of those five factors and also do any combinations of those factors create a different response to the individual application of those. Um, we want to try and predict the responses that we're getting for different levels and combinations of the factors. And ultimately, we want to find the levels of the factors that provide the optimum responses. So we're trying to, to, to fine tune our system effectively to get the maximum output. And we're playing around with the inputs uh, in a structured way, obviously, to be able to figure that out. Some examples, we do experimentation in our daily lives. It's something that happens all the time. Um, so for example, if uh, any of you are photography buffs um, and you're trying to get the, the right quality of slides, uh, maybe with the flash attachment, the factors you could be playing around with, so the speed of the film, the shutter speed, the lighting. So a lot of different things to consider. Um, all very well if you're using your, uh, your phone, but uh, if you have uh, an SLR camera, then these are some of the factors you may want to think about. Um, even in terms of boiling water, how long does it take us to boil the water? Put it in the kettle, put it in a pan, uh, what level of heat do we put under it? Uh, have we it covered? All these types of factors um, can go into establishing how long it takes to boil the water. And again, we're trying to figure out how long it's going to take to, for a letter to be delivered. You know, it will vary depending on the area code. Is it posted before or after collection time? Do we put the right stamp on it? Do we put any stamp on it? These types of factors will impact it. So even on a daily basis, 
Um, we're involved in performing experiments, thinking about options and alternatives. So if we think in terms of the engineering space, um, there are a significant number of applications, and these are just some of the very, very many types of applications um, of experiments. So they could be done to evaluate and compare basic design configurations, looking at response variables, um, evaluating different materials. How do they perform under different conditions and in different circumstances? determining key design parameters that will impact performance of a new product or a service. So essentially, we're looking at selecting design parameters so that the design work well under a wide variety of, uh, of field, conditions, field conditions or environments. So robust design is the label we have on this. But essentially, what we're trying to do is, for example, we're selling a new product into a, a market uh, or into multiple markets some of them close to the equator and others in the North Pole. We want to make sure that the product will work at these various temperatures and um, with varying degrees of humidity, um, in frost, in intense sunlight. So these are all the types of factors that we may we need to um, to take into account when we're, uh, when we're designing a product for that particular type of application. <coughs> the actual strategies that we use for experimentation, um, I suppose that the simplest one is the trial and error. Um, very basic approach to uh, to testing stuff out. It can go on for an, an, a long time, and it doesn't necessarily guarantee that we're going to find the best solution. Uh, an improvement from that, obviously, is to take each factor and, and to run a, a series of tests, adjusting one factor at a time. Um, that's inefficient because it requires significant amount of test runs, um, and it doesn't look at the interactions that occur between different factors that are getting well, in the 20s, um, we saw the factorial approach being uh, being developed, and this is, has enabled factors, different factors, to be together. And that's certainly the most uh, the most efficient approach that uh, hasn't been superseded um, since since that was developed. And that factorial um, approach to experimentation is used extensively um, in industrial research and development, and for for significant process and product improvement projects. So it does exist. Um, the other thing to be aware of, I suppose, is that uh, there are four distinct phases of the development um, of design of experiments from its agricultural origins, um, back around the time of the, just after the First World War, um, where it had a significant impact on, um, on agricultural science and product development. Um, and they used analysis of areas and uh, factorial designs were the tools that were used in, the, in, in that initial era. Um, that was followed um, after the Second World War, as was by the first industrial started to get applications in the, the chemical and the processing industries, beginning to see it move out of the uh, the agricultural base. And then there was a second industrial area, which would have occurred in the from the 70s through to the, the through the last 20 or 30 years of the uh, the 20th century, and uh, there was a big uptake in terms of quality improvement initiatives, the growth of of uh, TQM. Um, um, these various improvement initiatives have resulted unquestionably in a, a significant step up in, uh, in the use of experimentation. We also saw Taguchi emerge at this stage with his amended version, I suppose, of the full factorial experiments and the concept of robust parameter design uh, and of building processes that were robust so that we could have variation within those processes. And then the modern year, I suppose, which started just before the end of the, uh, the 20th century, the last 10 years or so, and has rolled in now, and we're seeing an extent as a significantly expanded use of the uh, in generally and in business, and a wide uh, use of computer technologies and applications to support fairly extensive uh, kind of experimental work. So it's moved a long way um, in, in 100 years, and uh, the level of, of use and value from it is, uh, to be honest, is unquestionable, really. Um, Taguchi had a slightly different uh, approach, if you like, or uh, an amended version of the full factorial uh, design of experiments, which had been developed by Fisher. Um, that traditional design of experiments focused on how different design factors affect the average result level. Um, whereas Taguchi's uh, design of experiments, or the robust design methodology, um, focused more on the variation than on the average. So I suppose some of the key differences between the Taguchi methods and the traditional design of experiments would be that Taguchi's approach focused primarily on optimizing design parameters in order to reduce the variability that was caused by manufacturing variations. In most industrial processes, controlling variability is much harder than controlling the average value. 
Taguchi categorizes that variables that affect product performance according to whether they're design parameters or whether they're sources of noise. The design parameters are just the, the nominal dimensions chosen by the, dom the designer. However, the sources of noise include all those variables that can cause performance to deviate from those target values. So while classical DOE focuses on all of the parameters, often requiring many costly experiments um, to be run to estimate all of the main effects and all of the interactions, Taguchi's approach includes and it systematically varies noise factors in a designed experiment and it de-emphasizes the interaction effects. So rather than looking at all of the interactions, um, there's a process of identifying the more important interactions. And uh, these are the ones that are focused on. So essentially, Taguchi's approach um, he approaches design from that, from that robust design perspective. Um, it's also called the robust parameter design, and it really does improve engineering productivity. So it's a method for designing products and processes, which are then robust to uncontrollable variations in the manufacturing process primarily. It's based on Fisher's methodology for determining parameter levels. And it's also, it's probably comparable in, part, in terms of the contribution to uh, engineering science. It would be comparable to SPC and to some of the Japanese concepts that were developed within, um, by, by Denning and Duran and so on in their time. So to get into a little bit more detail now on what Taguchi's design of experiments actually involves, Taguchi had the, the concept of robust design. He focused on three aspects of design. So first was the concept design, where he identified it as examining competing technologies that can be used to produce a product. And one of the things that Taguchi highlighted was that process technology and process design choices can have a significant impact on production costs, um, can significantly reduce them, obviously, by uh, deploying new technology, and can also result in higher quality products. Um, second uh, design piece is the parameter design. And this is really the selection of the control factors and determining the levels that each of those factors should be run at. So these control factors, they're the variables that can be manipulated in a process. And generally, they don't affect production costs. Optimal levels are targets or measurements for performance. And literally, what we're trying to do here is to find the most efficient process and or service design. And those parameters are obviously determined through the experimentation cycle. So that's effectively the, uh, the Taguchi design of experiments model. And um, I've discussed some of how the uh, differences from the um, from the more traditional design of experiments. The next thing I want to look at is the uh, Taguchi loss function. So what is the Taguchi loss function? Interestingly, Taguchi had a, a definition of quality that doesn't fit with a lot of the, um, the more traditional ones, I suppose, where he identified that uh, a quality loss was actually the loss imparted by the product to society from the time that the product is shipped. So it's not just about tolerances, and that, that loss to society includes things like the cost of operating the machine, failure of the machine to work, customer satisfaction issues, maintenance or repair problems, design-related issues, the environmental impact, life cycle costs. There's a whole range of different areas that um, the quality loss can be defined as. So the model that uh, Taguchi developed to actually explore this um, philosophical perspective, if you will, is that um, traditional quality works off tolerances. And Taguchi argued that we don't need to hit the tolerance to find a defect. That as we move away from the midpoint or the optimum target level, that we begin to incur losses. Uh, the chart that you're looking at highlights the fact that uh, on the left hand side, you've got a very traditional view of quality where we measure between the upper and the lower spec limit. And um, obviously, if it's outside of that spec limit, we end up with losses that take us back to our capability in the days and how we established the ability of the product to stay within. Um, the Taguchi model, though, argues uh, on the right hand side that as we move away from that minimum but sorry, from the central target value in either direction, that we actually incur a loss. Um, interesting, thought-provoking. Uh, there's a lot more information on this particular model. 
um, but it's certainly worth thinking about, particularly when we consider uh, that process capability is measured by the proportion of output that can be produced within design specifications, which is everything that's in there. Yet the Taguchi loss function suggests that it's not a strict cutoff point that divides good quality from bad quality. So it's a useful concept for process design. Rather, Taguchi assumed that the losses can be approximated by a quadratic function so that larger deviations from targets correspond to increasingly larger losses. For the case in which a specific target value T is determined to produce the optimal performance, and in which quality deteriorates as the actual value moves away from the target on either side. This is called a nominal as best. The loss function is actually represented by a formula. Um, Lx, so the loss function, is equal to k times x minus t to be squared. That again is the loss function is equal to k times x minus t square and that's where x is any actual value of the quality characteristic and k is some constant and that's estimated by determining the costs associated with the deviation from the target t as i said is the target value and then x minus t is the deviation from the target that represents the deviation or the loss which increases by the square of that deviation so let me give you a, a simple example of how we would calculate this. In this particular example, uh, we have a blueprint spec for the thickness of a fridge part. Um, the spec is 0.3 plus or minus 0.025 centimeters, and it costs 25 euro to scrap a part that's outside of those specifications. So we want to find what the Taguchi loss function is. That's the LX. So we know LX is equal to K times X minus T to be squared. Now, a loss function, so 25 is when we scrap it. It's 25 euro to scrap it. And that's equal to k times, which is our constant, times x minus t. So we scrap it when it gets to 25 outside of the spec. So x minus t drifts to 25. x minus t. So therefore, the formula is 25 euro is equal to k times. 0.025 squared, so k works out at 4,000, and that in turn allows us to identify that the loss function is 40,000 x minus t to be squared. Another example of figuring out what the loss function is, is another one where we have uh, sound, sound boards for a car stereo. The component must be 12 plus or minus a half a volt. Exceeding that limit gives us a scrap loss of 60 euro. So we want to determine the loss again here in this example. So as with the last example, we know that um, the loss function is k times x minus t squared. And the loss function is uh, 60 euro at that 0.5. So it's k by 0.5 squared. So once it moves 0.5 away, we end up with that loss of 60. And that allows us to calculate our k value of 240. Mm. And then our new loss function for this particular environment is 240 times x minus t squared. So the key formula is Lx equals k x minus t squared, and those examples allow us to uh, to work through it, see how the actual figures work and how the calculation works out. And just going back here, so again, reminder: the k is the constant that we can, that we have to calculate. X is the quality feature, the critical value. So we're looking at x minus t, the distance from the target value. So when that reaches the scrap point. We square it, we have a value, and we can figure out what that constant is, and then we reinsert that constant back into the formula to get our final values. So thank you very much for um, watching this uh, webinar on the Taguchi loss function and on design of experiments. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have any questions or comments regarding the material, please uh, drop me a note on uh, jim at leanjimcollins.ie. Thank you.